everybody. I'm Ed Robinson, and welcome to another exciting edition of Striving For It All. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the WNBA. Coming up on this edition of the program, we'll have your current league leaders and standings in the W and so much more. But let's get right to it. Here are my top three storylines. I'd like to start off talking about this year's WNBA All-Star Game and rosters. Yes, this year's WNBA All-Star Game will take place on July the 20th, 2024. It will be on in prime time on ABC. Tip-off will be for 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Central, and 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. I can't forget about our friends in the Mountain Time Zone at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And this All-Star Game is expected to be phenomenal this year. This could have, well, I won't say this could, but most likely it will be an all-star game of epic proportion in terms of attendance, in terms of sellout, in terms of just revenue and TV ratings. This this year's all-star game is expected to break some major records. But first, let me give you how the format is going to be for this year's all-star game. So this year's all-star game is going to be Team USA versus Team WNBA because, you know, this year is an Olympic year and the Team USA, uh, the team, uh, the United States women's Olympic basketball team, their roster was announced about several weeks ago, but we'll give you once again the roster for Team USA and then we'll give you the roster for Team WNBA. So again, this year's format is going to be Team USA versus Team WNBA and the roster for Team USA is going to be Nafisa Collier representing the Minnesota Lynx. This is going to be her fourth All-Star selection. Kalia Copper from the Phoenix Mercury. This is going to be her also her fourth All-Star selection. Chelsea Gray from the Las Vegas Aces. This will be her sixth All-Star selection. Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. This is going to be her tenth All-Star selection. Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. This is going to be her third All-Star selection. Jewel Lloyd from the Seattle Storm. This is going to be her sixth All-Star selection. Excuse me, we have Kelsey Plum from the Las Vegas Aces. This is going to be her third All-Star selection. Brianna Stewart from the New York Liberty. This is going to be her sixth All-Star selection. Diana Taurasi from the Phoenix Mercury. This is going to be her 11th All-Star selection. Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. This is going to be her fifth All-Star selection. Asia Wilson, what a phenomenal first half of the year she's having, representing the Las Vegas Aces. This is going to be her sixth All-Star selection. And Jackie Young from the Las Vegas Aces. This is going to be her third All-Star selection. So that takes care of Team USA. Now, Here's Team WNBA, Dewana Bonner, representing the Connecticut Sun. This is going to be her sixth All-Star selection. Aaliyah Boston from the Indiana Fever. This is going to be her second All-Star selection. Alicia Gray from the Atlanta Dream. This is going to be her second All-Star selection. Dierica Hamby, what a phenomenal first half of the year she's having. She's representing the Los Angeles Sparks. This is going to be her third All-Star selection. Brianna Jones from the Connecticut Sun. This is going to be her third All-Star selection. Jonquel Jones from the New York Liberty. This is going to be her fifth All-Star selection. Kayla McBride from the Minnesota Lynx. This is going to be her fourth All-Star selection. Kelsey Mitchell from the Indiana Fever. This is going to be her second All-Star selection. Arike Ogunbowale from the Dallas Wings. This is going to be her fourth All-Star selection. Mecca Ogwumake from the Seattle Storm. This is going to be her ninth All-Star selection. What a phenomenal year Mecca is having in her first year with the Seattle Storm, man. What an amazing job she has done alongside Jewel Lloyd, Skylar Diggins-Smith, and the court head coach, Noel Quinn. And then, of course, we have Angel Reese representing the Chicago Sky. This is going to be her first All-Star selection. And Caitlin Clark from the Indiana Fever. This is her first All-Star selection. So that makes up Team WNBA. 
And yes, I, you weren't hearing things. You did hear the right things. Angel Reese, and they will both play on the same team. They will both be on Team WNBA. So once again, the stage is set for the 2024 in WNBA All-Star Game between Team USA versus Team WNBA. But the day, the night before the All-Star Game, there will be, of course, you have your three-point contest and your skills challenge. That will be televised on ESPN. If you're in the U.S. and if you're in Canada, it's going to be on TSN, too. So if you know about the WNBA All-Star Weekend, specifically with the three-point contest and the skills challenge, those are always fun. I have a strange feeling that Caitlin Clark may get in on this. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see about that. But if Caitlin, well, I won't say if, if, yeah, I'll say this. If Caitlin is in this, this could certainly be, I mean, a three-point contest and a skills challenge for the ages. I mean, exciting. Certainly, this is going to be an all-star weekend for the ages and certainly a 2024 WNBA All-Star Game, that's going to be one for the record books in Las Vegas this year. So, again, it's July 20th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Central, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, and 6.30 p.m. Mountain on ABC and also on TSN, as well as TSN, uh, TSN and also uh, Sports One if you're living in Canada. So, Man, this All-Star game this year is definitely going to be a lot of fun. And Caitlin Clark was the leading vote-getter for this year's All-Star game. She received 700,735 votes, making her the leading vote-getter for this year's All-Star game. And then number two was Aaliyah Boston with 618,680. Coming in in third was Asia Wilson. She had 607,300 votes, followed by Brianna Stewart in fourth with 424,135 votes. And then in fifth, Angel Reese. She had 381,518 votes. So, again, Caitlin Clark, the leading vote-getter for this year's All-Star Game, followed by Aaliyah Boston, Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, and then Angel Reese. So th this is a star-studded affair for this year's All-Star Game. It's going to be, I mean, one for the record, but this is going to be fun on top of fun. So definitely this is going to be exciting. My next storyline is going to be Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese being on the same All-Star team. So as I stated earlier, this year's All-Star Game is going to be different. This year's All-Star Weekend is going to be different for all of the right reasons. It's going to be different because of the anticipation. It's going to be different because of what's at stake as far as with Team USA versus Team WNBA. What's going to be different about this is, yeah, Caitlin Clark not being on Team USA, however, being a member of this year's All-Star team for Team WNBA. And what's going to be different is Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese being on the same team. This is definitely going to be an interesting situation. I think what's going to be interesting is that I wonder if they're going to be in the starting lineup for this, for the represent team WNBA. We know they're going to have moments where they're going to be on the court together, but I wonder if they're going to be in the starting lineup for this year's All-Star Game representing Team WNBA. It may happen. We'll have to see. But the bottom line is this. This is so monumental. Again, when you're talking about two women that really took women's college basketball to a whole nother level, to a whole nother stratosphere, that is Caitlin Clark and that is Angel Reese. And these two are on a collision course for this year's Rookie of the Year honors. Caitlin getting it done at her, posi her position. She currently plays the point guard position in the top 10 in the league in assists and in minutes played. Angel Reese, the queen of the double double, right? Playing the uh, power forward position. Somebody that has strength in getting those second chance points. And we'll talk more about her double doubles a little bit later on in the program. But. These two are dynamic in a very special way, and this year's All-Star Game is going to be certainly dynamic. And, of course, 
All eyes have been on Caitlin and Angel the last couple of years, taking women's college basketball to a whole nother level. And it's, all eyes are definitely going to be on them as is, this is going to be a WNBA all-star game just for the record books, especially with having Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese being on the same team. It's just these two ladies headlining and, and taking, try, and attempting to take the WNBA to heights and take it to you know another stratosphere like never before. And my last storyline is going to be the Seattle Storm. So the Seattle Storm, they have been clicking on all cylinders this year. As this show is airing, the Seattle Storm have won their last five out of six games. And uh, listen, this, this winning streak that they're currently on is phenomenal. Ezzy Magbogor getting it done, rebounding, and especially blocking shots. Well, for me, clearly one of the best defenders in the W currently. You got Skylar Diggins-Smith, who is having a phenomenal year. I said it earlier, Neka Agwumake, what a comeback year she's having this year. Just doing, doing what Neka does best. Neka is, is true to this. She's not new to this. And certainly Neka still getting it done. And this is just a, a, a great comeback year for her. Jordan, Hor- J- Jordan Horston playing nice basketball this year, making her contributions felt for the Seattle Storm. And how about uh, the Gold Mamba, Jewel Lloyd? I mean, Jewel Lloyd is a walking bucket. I mean, on both sides of the ball, what can you say about her? Somebody that we're watching in real time, in living color, and somebody that has just been balling this year. I mean, Jewel is the – we talk about Asia Wilson being the leading MVP candidate. You got to add Jewel Lloyd to that list as well. Jewel is – has been phenomenal and just continues to get better year in and year out. And, of course, she is a disciple of the late, great Kobe Bryant, right? Jewel, she got the nickname, the Gold Mamba, and certainly she is making Kobe very proud. And I know he's smiling down, definitely pleased with her performance and in this first half of the year. And also, Noel Quinn. Kudos to Noel Quinn. Noel is definitely in strong consideration for this year's Coach of the Year honors. Noel has done a, a fantastic job. I mean, what a difference a year makes, right? What a difference actually, what a difference two years makes. Back in 2022, it was the end of an era. Sue Bird, her final year in the W, we know about all the records that Sue set, right? It, it's no secret what she did in her college career and what she did in the W. And then last year, it was a year of growing pains. Jewel Lloyd, last year's scoring champion, also, uh, did, I mean, was phenomenal in last year's All-Star Game. One was the All-Star Game MVP, but the team did not do well. The team did not make the playoffs. They had a, a terrible record. And... You know, what a difference two years makes, as I, as I stated earlier. And Noel Quinn, again, I think she's definitely deserves a strong consideration for Coach of the Year honors. But, man, they're really just balling up there in the Pacific Northwest right now. And certainly kudos to the Seattle Storm. All right, so that takes care of uh, my top three storylines. And now it's time for to get to your – the week that was in the W, just give you a recap of what happened during the course of the W so far during the week that was. So let's start off with Tuesday, June the 25th. We had the Minnesota Lynx go up against the New York Liberty. And this was this year's Commissioner's Cup. Again, if you're not familiar with the Commissioner's Cup, this is basically the WNBA's version of of the in-season tournament. That's what the Commissioner's Cup is. And certainly, congratulations to the Minnesota Lynx for winning this year's Commissioner's Cup. They would beat the New York Liberty 94-89. to And then, on that, uh, then we move along now to action from Tuesday, June the 27th. We had the Minnesota Lynx go up against the Dallas Wings. And Dallas would go on to win 94-88. to And then we also had the Las Vegas Aces take on the Chicago Sky, and Las Vegas would win 95-83. to 
We had a game to go to overtime between the Connecticut Sun and the Washington Mystics. Connecticut would go on to win in overtime 94-91. to This game was about Taisha Harris. Taisha Harris had a career high in this game, and she certainly handled her business. Here is Taisha in action. Harris matches the score at Comet surveying and orchestrating. Here's Harris. And they're going to count the bucket. Ty Harris able to get that jumper. And Harris cuts it now down to a two-point game. Harris shot off the mark. And then Heinz Allen turning it over right to the hands of Harris. Harris stripped that out of the hands of Van Loo on the attack. Harris, pull-up jumper, gets that to go. Thomas on the kick to Harris. Harris getting in the paint. <laughs> Ty Harris just eight on the shot clock. Burton kicks it. Harris. She calmly knocks down the corner three. Bonner attacking. Goes to Thomas. Extra pass. Harris three. She connects. All right, that audio is courtesy of the WNBA NBA TV and league pass. So again, Taisha Harris had a career high with 23 points, and she also had four steals, and that sealed the deal as the Connecticut Sun beat the Washington Mystics in overtime, 94 to 91. So Taisha had 23 points, and also other contributors in the victory for Connecticut. Dewana Bonner had a double double with 24 points and 10 rebounds, and Dejanae Carrington finished with 22 points. On the losing end for the Washington Mystics, Maisha Hines Allen had 21 points. Stephanie Dolson finished with 18 points. Julie Van Lu had 12 points, and Ariel Atkins had 10 points. Once again, the final score, Connecticut 94, Washington 91 in overtime. And we had the Indiana Fever take on the Seattle Storm. Seattle would win 89-277. I mentioned her name earlier, the Gold Mamba, Jewel Lloyd. She, listen, phenomenal in every sense of the word. The Gold Mamba handled her business. She scored 34 points. Here's Jewel in action. Seattle looking to push every possession. Jewel, catch, fire, boom! 12 oh, run for Seattle! Here's Jewel turning the corner. Oh, is she feeling it? Look out! Here's Jewel on the attack, circles back around. Will fade, fire, and hit. It's all going down for Jewel Lloyd. Ooh, no kick call on that one. Instead, it's a turnover. Here comes Lloyd into the corner. Is she going to fire? Yes, she is. Is she staying hot? Yes, she is. Boom! Jewel Lloyd. Here's Jewel. Catch and shoot. Boom! And steal by Jewel. She's going to coast in and get to 34 for her season high. All right, so that audio was courtesy of the WNBA and Amazon Prime Video. Jewel Lloyd was sensational, scoring 34 points. Also contributing to the victory for Seattle, Ezie McBegore finished with 18 points, and Neka Agwomake had a double-double with 15 points and 11 rebounds. On the losing end for the Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark finished with 15 points. Kelsey Mitchell finished with 14 points. Melissa Smith finished with 12 points, and Aaliyah Boston had a double-double with 11 points, 14 rebounds, and Erica Wheeler finished with 15 points. Once again, the final score was Seattle 89, Indiana 77. So we move along now to action from Friday, June the 28th. The Atlanta Dream beat the Connecticut Sun 78-74, to and the Phoenix Mercury beat the Los Angeles Sparks 92-78. to we move along now to action from Saturday, June the 29th. The Las Vegas Aces beat the Washington Mystics 88-77. to And then we had the Seattle Storm handle their business, beating the Dallas Wings 97-76. to Hey, I meant we talked about it earlier. Hey, why not an encore, right? Jewel Lloyd, phenomenal. She finished with 30 points. Here's Jewel in action. Oh, sloppy handle there, almost a turnover, but Lloyd gets it back. She'll go right at J.C. Sheldon and get it to go. Mecca now kicks back out of Goomba Wallet. Dumping it low. Picked off by Ezzie Magdalore. She says, no more of these post-ups. I'm going to play in front. Biggin Smith 
Ball batted out. Jewel Roy tees it up. And knocks it home. Puts the free goggles up. Oh, speaking of phenomenal. Look at that feed by Jewel Lloyd. Easy. Oh, Jewel Lloyd with the kiss off the glass. And he's getting some more here for Jewel Lloyd. For Jewel bully ball. Gets it to go. Umake trying to get it back to Jewel. But she is locked up by J.C. Shelton. Now she'll get it back to the basket. Turn and face. And hit. Jewel Lloyd. Lloyd with it. One, two. Off the glass. All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA, NBA TV, and league, and league pass. So Jewel Lloyd was sensational. She finished with 30 points. Also contributing in the victory, Neka Agwomake finished with 16 points. Ezie Macbogore finished with 13 points. Jordan Horston had a double-double with 12 points and 11 rebounds. And Skylar Diggins-Smith finished with 11 points. Again, the final score was Seattle 97, Dallas 76. We move along now to action from Sunday, June the 30th. We had the Atlanta Dream take on the New York Liberty. And the Liberty would go on to beat the Dream 81 to 75. Followed by, we had the Indiana Fever in a good game. This was the first vic- the first matchup with Caitlin Clark going up against Diana Taurasi. What a game that was. But the Fever held on. They would beat the Mercury 88-82. to Caitlin Clark had a double-double with 15 points and 12 assists. Melissa Smith finished with a double-double with 12 points, 15 rebounds. Aaliyah Boston finished with 17 points. Kelsey Mitchell finished with 16 points, and Timmy Fack Bindley finished with 10 points. On a losing end for the Mercury, Diana Taurasi finished with 19 points. Brittany Griner finished with 24 points, and Natasha Cloud finished with 15 points. Once again, the final score, Indiana 88, Phoenix 82. And the Minnesota Lynx beat the Chicago Sky 70-62. to Let's move along now to action from Monday, July the 1st. The Seattle Storm had their way again with the Dallas Wings. Final score, 95-71. to And the Connecticut Sun beat the Phoenix Mercury. Final score was 93-72. to And then we moved, excuse me, the final score was 83-72 to with Connecticut beating Phoenix. Let's move along now to action from Tuesday, July the 2nd. The New York Liberty beat the Minnesota Lynx. 76 to 67. The Chicago Sky beat the Atlanta Dream 85 to 77. The Washington Mystics beat the Los Angeles Sparks in a close one 82 to 80. And the Indiana Fever would take on the Las Vegas Aces. It was all Aces. Final score 88 to 69. It was all Aces and it was all Kelsey Plum in this contest and. Listen, you talk about somebody that's a, a walking bucket, a walking three-pointer, and then some, that's Kelsey Plum. Here she is in action. Young gets it over to Plum. Knocks it down. Indiana gives it away again. Plum grabs it, tries to go up and under, and it works. Gray with the miss. Young comes away with the rebound. Gray gets it out to Plum, left wide open, and she makes some pay. Plum! from this distance again. Asia Wilson chases it down. Plum. New season high for Kelsey. Wow, Kelsey Plum. Are you kidding me? I mean, she's just dialing it up right here. Plum. Oh, my goodness. So that audio was courtesy of the WNBA, ESPN, and the Walt Disney Company. And Kelsey Plum was sensational in this game. She scored 34 points. Also contributing to the victory for the Aces, Asia Wilson. She finished with 28 points. Jackie Young had a double-double with 15 points and 10 assists. And Kia Stokes contributed with 12 rebounds. In the losing effort for the Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark had a double-double with 13 points and 11 assists. Kelsey Mitchell finished with 23 points. Melissa Smith finished with 14 rebounds. And Aaliyah Boston had a double-double with 11 points, excuse me, with 18 points and 11 rebounds. But in the end, it was all aces. Las Vegas would beat Indiana final score 69-88. to 
We had action on Wednesday, July the 3rd, with the Phoenix Mercury beating the Dallas Wings 104 to 96. On the 4th of July, we had action with a good game between the Connecticut Sun and the Minnesota Lynx. Connecticut would win 78 to 73. The Las Vegas Aces would go on to beat the Washington Mystics 98 to 77. We move along now to action from Friday, July the 5th. In a very close game, a competitive game, the Dallas Wings would go on to beat the Atlanta Dream 85 to 82. Then we had the Chicago Sky take on the Seattle Storm. Chicago would win 88 to 84. In this game, it was all about Angel Reese. Angel Reese set a career high in points, and also, again, she's the queen of the double-double, and certainly we'll get more into that in just a little bit. But in the meantime, Angel was doing her thing and then some. Here she is in action. Carter against Horston. We're going to be watching that matchup all night long. Carter does a great job getting by Jordan there. Now on a Gumake. Good bounce pass to Reese. Up and in. Reese driving in with the left hand. Right at Magnagor trying to pick up a second foul. Didn't, but got to the window and scored. Reese, the flip shot with the right hand. No good, but gets her own rebound. Again, goes through traffic and scores. Angel Reese. Back to Harrison. Pump fakes inside. Reese flips it up with the left hand and scores. Mabry. Lops it inside, good job by Holmes to poke it free. Seven on the shot clock, three on the way, Angel Reese! And how about Angel Reese, the jumper's still flowing. <laughs> Carter, lobs it inside, good post position by Reese. Double team by Magmagor, alters the shot. Look at Reese work to get her own second shot opportunity. Reese for a dagger, Angel Reese! All right, that audio was courtesy of the WNBA Ion and League Pass. So Angel Reese had a career high in points. She scored 27 points to go along with 10 rebounds. Again, she got another double double. This is her 12th, this was her 12th straight double double. She would break a record, which we'll get into a little bit later on. But again, this game gave her her 12th straight double double. And again, she had 27 points and 10 rebounds. And Kennedy Carter, she contributed mightily in this victory. Kennedy was definitely in the zone on this one. She scored 33 points. And on the losing end for the Seattle Storm, Jordan Horston finished with 20 points. Neka Gwumake finished with 16 points. Desi Magbogor and Jewel Lloyd both finished with 13 points. And Skylar Diggins-Smith finished with 12 points. Once again, the final score, Chicago 88, Seattle 84. And what a finish we had, a game that went to overtime between the Las Vegas Aces and the Los Angeles Sparks. What a finish it was. Here's the Aces and Sparks in action in overtime. McDonald's to Hedgy. Tip control by L.A. Calvin attacking baseline. Jeff Calvin beating the defense. Went right at the two-time defensive player of the year. Young, the nice behind the back comes right back. Oh, Young, dancing behind Wilson. Stops. They leave her open at the elbow and she makes a pass. Hamby, looking for Talbot. Lob underneath. Hamby, Jordan, the flag. Jackson in the corner, looking for Talbot. Talbot puts it on the deck. Five to shoot. Clarence in the leader. Good. Looks for McDonald. Loses Clark, picked up by Stokes on the switch. Out to Talbot, high low, handy, George Depp. Yeah. Good. Plus the foul. All right, so that audio was courtesy of the WNBA Ion and League Pass, and what a finish it was out at the Crypto.com Arena in downtown Los Angeles as the Los Angeles Sparks beat the Las Vegas Aces in overtime, 98 to 93. For the Sparks, De'Arica Hamby was sensational. She had a double-double with 28 points and 14 rebounds. Ari McDonald con- contributed tremendously in this game. She finished with 23 points. And also, uh, Rakia Jackson finished with 14 points, and Stephanie Talbot hit some big shots. She finished with 13 points. On the losing end for the Aces, Asia Wilson, sensational. Double-double with 35 points, 12 rebounds. 
Kelsey Plum finished with 21 points, and Jackie Young finished with 18 points. Once again, the final score in overtime, Los Angeles 98, Las Vegas 93. Let's move along now to action from Saturday, from, on the, from Saturday, July the 6th. In a very close game between the New York Liberty and the Indiana Fever, the Fever would come back to beat the Liberty final score 83-78. to 78. So for the Fever, a, a monumental day, a record-breaking day, Caitlin Clark had a triple-double, 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 13 assists. This marked the first time in WNBA history that a rookie recorded a triple-double. So Caitlin definitely one of the key contributors, but definitely setting a milestone, breaking a record, becoming the first rookie to record a triple-double in WNBA history. So again, she had 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 13 assists. Aaliyah Boston finished with 18 points. Melissa Smith finished with a double-double with 12 points and 11 rebounds. And Kelsey Mitchell finished with 14 points. On the losing end for the Liberty, Betnija Laney Hamilton finished with 20 points. Sabrina Ionescu finished with 22 points. Brianna Stewart finished with 14 points. And then Jonquel Jones had 12 rebounds. So again, the final score, Indiana 83, New York 78. And then we had the Washington Mystics take on the Minnesota Lynx. Minnesota would win 74 to 67. And then action from Sunday, July the 7th, saw the Connecticut Sun beating the Atlanta Dream. Final score, 80 to 67. We also saw the Phoenix Mercury beat the Los Angeles Sparks in a close one, 84 to 78. We had the Dallas Wings go up against the Las Vegas Aces. Final score was 104 to 85. And in this game, it was about Asia Wilson. I mean, what, what can she do, right? Asia, at the peak of her powers right now, and the leading MVP candidate again this year. She's already a two-time league MVP, and the best just continues to get better for Asia. Simply outstanding, and she set a major milestone in this game. We'll bring it up in just a little bit. Here's Asia in action. Only a 500 team without Chelsea Gray. Asia Wilson. Asia. Now Young, able to dish it over to Wilson with McCowan in her grill. Sims tried to make something out of nothing. Asia Wilson runs the floor as well as anybody. Asia takes it right to Natasha Howard. Asia's always a good answer, right? Plum, <laughs> nice assist to Asia. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't the way to squash all the noise. Asia! All right, that audio was courtesy of the WNBA and ESPN. So Asia Wilson had a double-double with 28 points and 10 rebounds. I mentioned earlier that Asia set a milestone. She became the franchise's all-time leading scorer. Yeah, Asia becomes the Las Vegas Aces' all-time leading scorer in franchise history. And she passed up a player by the name of Sophia Young Malcolm, who played for the Aces, actually when the Aces were, the franchise was originally in San Antonio when they were known as the San Antonio Silver Stars. And so the, the history, if, you, if you're not familiar with your WNBA history, before they became the Las Vegas Aces, the franchise was in San Antonio for um, quite a while before making, before relocating to Las Vegas. So Asia, Asia Wilson passes up Sophia Young Malcolm to become the leading, the all-time leading scorer in the franchise's history amongst the Las Vegas Aces slash San Antonio Silver Stars, and congratulations to Asia on the, on that achieving that feat. And in the meantime, Kelsey Plum also contributed. She scored 23 points. Jackie Young finished with 18 points, and Chelsea Gray finished with 12 points. And on the, the losing end for the Dallas Wings, Odyssey Sims finished with 25 points. Natasha Howard finished with 14 points. And Enrique Ogunbowale finished with 13 points. So again, the final score was Las Vegas 104, Dallas 85. And then we had 
the Seattle Storm go up against the Chicago Sky. Seattle, Seattle would have their way final score 84-271. So despite losing the game, Angel Reese, hey, what a rookie campaign she's having so far in this first half of the year, continuing to break records. I'll bring up an important uh, milestone that she achieved in just a moment. In the meantime, here's Angel in action. Carter back iron. She missed. Offensive board, Angel Reese. Rumake, not once, not twice. Chicago with the rebound. And that players are gassed right now. Here's Reese inside against Jewel Lloyd, and she flips it up and in. Now to Mabry. High post Reese. Spinning on Jordan, on screen on Mercedes Russell and scoring. Nice move. The offensive rebound, Angel Reese. She puts it up and in. Allen has it. Inside the bounce pass to Angel Reese for the bucket. Carter attacks. That one's no good. Offensive rebound, put back. All right, so that audio was courtesy of the WNBA and league pass. So again, Angel Reese, another double double, 17 points, 14 rebounds despite Chicago losing. But what's significant about this is that Angel made history with her 13th consecutive double-double. That's right, Angel making history, getting her 13th straight double-double, breaking Candace Parker's record of consecutive double-doubles in in the WNBA. So, again, Angel continued to be one of the trendsetters for the new movement in the WNBA, and certainly Angel has been doing that. So, again, she had a double-double with 17 points and 14 rebounds despite the loss. Also, uh, Kennedy Carter finished with 21 points. Isabel Harrison finished with 11 points, and Marina Mabry finished with 14 points. Again, the final score, Seattle 84, Chicago 71 and that takes care of the week that was in the w but before we give you the league leaders and standings let's get to our player of the week award winners so let's start off with the week of june the 18th and congratulations to the eastern conference player of the week award winner Aliyah boston from the indiana fever and for the Western Conference, Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. So, again, congratulations to the Player of the Week Award winners for the week of June 18th. For the Eastern Conference, Aliyah Boston from the Indiana Fever. And for the Western Conference, Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. And then we have our Player of the Week Award winners for June the 25th. For the second time this year, the Eastern Conference Player of the Week Award winner belongs to Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. And for the Western Conference, for the second time this year, Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. So, again, congratulations to our Player of the Week Award winners for the week of June the 25th. For the Eastern Conference, Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. And for the Western Conference, Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. And now we have our Player of the Month Award winner, for the month of June. For the Eastern Conference, Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. And for the second time this year, the Western Conference Player of the Month Award winner for the month of June, Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. So again, we congratulate our Player of the, Player of the Month Award winners for the month of June. For the Eastern Conference, Sabrina Ionescu. And for the Western Conference, Asia Wilson. Our Rookie of the Month Award winner for the month of June goes to Angel Reese from the Chicago Sky. So, again, congratulations to Angel for becoming the Rookie of the Month Award winner for the month of June. And the Coach of the Month Award winner for the month of June goes to Cheryl Reeve from the Minnesota Lynx. So, congratulations to our award winners for the week and for the month. Let's move along now to our league leaders in points per game the current leading scorer in the w asia wilson from the las vegas aces she's averaging 27 points per game coming in at number two arike ogunbowale from the dallas wings she's averaging 23 points per game coming in at number three kalia copper from the phoenix mercury she's averaging 22 and a half points per game coming in at number four nafisa collier from the minnesota lynx She's averaging 20 points per game. 
And coming in at fifth, Jewel Lloyd from the Seattle Storm. She's averaging 19 points per game. Next category is going to be rebounds per game. No surprise, right? Coming in at number one, Angel Reese from the Chicago Sky. She's averaging 11 rebounds per game. Coming in at number two, Asia Wilson. Coming in at number three, De'Arica Hamby from the Los Angeles Sparks. Coming in in fourth, Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. And in fifth, Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. Next category is going to be assists per game. Coming in at number one, representing the Connecticut Sun, Alyssa Thomas. She's averaging almost eight assists per game. Coming in at number two, Caitlin Clark from the Indiana Fever. She's averaging just over seven assists per game. Coming in in third, Natasha Cloud from the Phoenix Mercury. And in tied for fourth, we have Skylar Diggins-Smith from the Seattle Storm and Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. Next category is going to be steals. Coming in at number one, Arike Ogunbowale from the Dallas Wings. And then tied for second, we have Ryan Howard from the Atlanta Dream and Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. In fourth, we have Brianna Stewart from the New York Liberty. And in fifth, Asia Wilson. Next category is going to be blocks per game. Coming in at number one, her name again, Asia Wilson, representing the Las Vegas Aces. Coming in at number two, Ezzy Magbagor from the Seattle Storm. Coming in at, in third place, Cameron Brink from the Los Angeles Sparks. In fourth, Elena Smith from the Minnesota Lynx. And in fifth, Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. Next category is going to be field goal percentage. At number one, representing the New York Liberty, Jonquel Jones. She's shooting 58% from the field. Coming in at number two, Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. She's shooting 57% from the field. Coming in in third, Tiara McCowan from the Dallas Wings. In fourth, Neka Agwumake from the Seattle Storm. And in fifth, Brianna Jones from the Connecticut Sun. Next category is going to be free throw percentage. Coming in at number one, shooting 100% from the free throw line, Dana Evans from the Chicago Sky. At number two, Cheyenne Parker from the Atlanta Dream. Coming in in third, Kayla McBride from the Minnesota Lynx. In fourth, Sabrina Ionescu. And in fifth, Arike Ogunbowale. Next category is going to be three-point percentage. Coming in at number one, Stephanie Dolson from the Washington Mystics. She's shooting 49% from three-point range. Coming in at number two, Neka Agwumake from the Seattle Storm. Coming in in third, Cecilia Zandalassini from the Minnesota Lynx. In fourth, Elena Smith from the Minnesota Lynx. And in fifth, once again, representing the Minnesota Lynx, Bridget Carlton. And then the last category that we have is minutes played. At number one, representing the Dallas Wings, Arike Ogunbowale. She's averaging 38 minutes per game. Coming in at number two, Kelsey Plum from the Las Vegas Aces. In third, Dierica Hamby from the Los Angeles Sparks. Coming in at fourth, Nafisa Collier from, excuse me, uh, number one, uh, Kelsey Plum from the Las Vegas Aces. Coming in in third, Dierica Hamby from the Los Angeles Sparks. In fourth, Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. And in fifth, Caitlin Clark from the Indiana Fever. So in minutes played, Arike Ogunbowale is number one. Kelsey Plum is number two. Diarca Hamby is currently third. Nafisa Collier is fourth. And then Caitlin Clark is fifth. And that takes care of your league leader so far in the W. Let's move over now to the current standings. The New York Liberty are currently in first place with a record of 17-4. and four. Followed by the Connecticut Sun, they currently have a record of also of 17 and 4. The Minnesota Lynx are next in third place with a record of 15 and 6. The Seattle Storm is in fourth with a record of 14 and 7. The Las Vegas Aces are in fifth place with a record of 13 and 7. 
The Phoenix Mercury are in sixth place with a record of 11 and 10. The Indiana Fever are in seventh place with a record of 9 and 13. The Chicago Sky is in eighth place with a record of 8 and 12. The Atlanta Dream is in ninth with a record of 17 and 13. The Los Angeles Sparks are in 10th place with a record of 5 and 16. Followed by the Washington Mystics in 11th with a record of 5 and 17. And currently in last place are the Dallas Wings. They also have a record of 5 and 17. And that takes care of your current standings in the W. So now let's look ahead now to the week that will be in the W, and certainly games are going to be heating up as we get closer to the All-Star break. Let's start off with games that we have on Tuesday, July the 9th. The Minnesota Lynx will square off against the Los Angeles Sparks. That game will take will tip off at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific on League Pass. Then we move along now to games from Wednesday, July the 10th. We've got the New York Liberty taking on the Connecticut Sun. Tip-off is at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, and you can watch that game on League Pass. And then we move ahead. We look uh, – hey, I'm sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's correct. It's going to be 9 a.m. Pacific on League Pass with the New York Liberty and the Connecticut Sun. And then 11 a.m. Central, and then also – It's going to be 9 a.m. Yeah, 9 a.m. Pacific time between the Washington Mystics and the Indiana Fever, and you can watch that game on NBA TV and League Pass. And also tipping off at that same time is going to be the Atlanta Dream going up against the Chicago Sky. You can watch that game on League Pass. And then tip off is going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. 12 p.m. Pacific with the Las Vegas Aces going up against the Seattle Storm. You can watch that game on League Pass. And then tipping off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Central, and 12, I believe it's going to be 1.30. That's right. It's going to be, is that 1.30? No, 12 is going to be 12.30 Pacific time between the Dallas Wings and the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Mercury, and you can watch that game on League Pass. And then we've got action on Thursday, July the 11th, between the Chicago Sky and the New York Liberty. Tip-off at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, and you can watch that game on Amazon Prime Video. Then we move along now to action on Friday, July the 12th. Tip-off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Central between the Las Vegas Aces and the Atlanta Dream. You can watch that game on ION and League Pass. Uh, Tipping off at that same time will be the Phoenix Mercury going up against the Indiana Fever. You can also watch that game on ION and League Pass. And then at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific, The Minnesota Lynx will square off against the Seattle Storm. You can watch that game on ION and League Pass. And then then on Saturday, July the 13th, tip-off at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central, with the New York Liberty going up against the Chicago Sky. You can watch that game on ABC. And then tip-off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Central, with the Los Angeles Sparks going up against the Dallas Wings. You can watch that game on CBS. And then we've got games on Sunday, July the 14th, with the Phoenix Mercury taking on the Connecticut Sun. Tip-off is at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central. That game is going to be on ABC. And then tip-off is going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, with the Las Vegas Aces going up against the Washington Mystics. You can watch that game on CBS SN and League Pass. And then tip-off is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, with the Indiana Fever going up against the Minnesota Lynx. You can watch that game on ESPN. And then tip-off is going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, with the Atlanta Dream going up against the Seattle Storm. And you can watch that game on League Pass. 
And so those are the games that are, that are going to be coming up in the W. So the action is hot. It continues to get intense. And, hey, it is going to be that way as we get closer and closer to the All-Star break. So certainly it should be a lot of fun. And until next time, everybody, I'm Matt Robinson. I hope you enjoyed yourself on this edition of the program. And as always, again, until next time, so long, everyone. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.